hub and more like we think of ourselves as a hospitality company mm. so you know we've got a laser sharp focus on how do we create an experience that keeps people wanting to come back every day to the office focus on hospitality and experience because people know now that they've got to give people as i said before a reason to come back to the office you know we really realize that if we double down on our team and created a great place to work for them mm. and in turn they'll end up creating a great place to work for all of our customers Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Lynn Panetti here. And in today's episode, I will be talking to Brad Krauskopf, who is the CEO and founder of Hub Australia. Now, Hub Australia is a premium co-working space with locations all around Australia. And my business outsourcing angel is lucky enough to be their preferred supplier for virtual assistants. So in this episode, I got to ask Brad about how and why he started his co-working space business, you know, how has the pandemic really affected the co-working space industry, as well as what are the benefits for entrepreneurs or companies you know working in spaces like the co-working space rather than working from home and much more so enjoy hey brad so good to have you here today great to be here Lynn. <laughs> finally grab hold of you you've been a busy man opening up a lot of hub places and um yeah i just wanted this opportunity to really talk about this new world what we're living in flexible working and definitely it's been such a privilege to be a preferred partner of hub australia as well so yeah today's topic i just want to deep dive into this new flexible working, which isn't that new because you've been in the business for like, you know, over 10 years. So Brad, take it away. Let us know, like, you know, how did you come up with the idea and what made you start this business? Yeah, yeah, sure thing. And yeah, look, great to finally get to chat with you. <laughs> and yeah, I guess in one sense, like flexible workspace has been around for even longer than, you know, 10 years ago when co-working kind of kicked off. Like serviced offices have been around for, for like 40 years now. So, you know, this concept of people consuming their real estate on shorter terms. It's been around for a while, but co-working, which is when I first got into it, that really kicked off after the GFC when what you had is a whole bunch of people who became freelancers, i.e. they'd lost their jobs. They uh, got uh, completely bored and, and, and depressed being at home. So to escape the isolation of being at home, they started uh, congregating at co-working spaces. I immediately loved that because I like being surrounded by diverse people doing different things. Uh, it just made work more fun. I could say, oh, I saw the opportunity that will come in 10 years from now, but post pandemic. But of course, I, I didn't see that at the time. What I saw was people connecting and working in different ways. Certainly what's happened, though, is that co-working has evolved and now in a co-working flexible workspace, whichever way you want to, whatever uh, term you want to call it, the really big thing that, 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 that we're ultimately providing now is attracting and retaining people in organisations. So the workspace mm -hmm. is, a, is a tool that every company's got to create a, a productive environment, to create a environment that innovates and, 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 and what forth. And, you know, co-working is actually really good at that. And it's really hard to create that in your own workspace. Mm -hmm. So we've ended up becoming the workplace partner for, for, for businesses who, who want to attract and retain the best talent. Oh, wow, that is so interesting. So kind of originally kind of attracted a lot of freelancers and I remember 10 years ago when I first started my business I actually you know rented I can't remember the place in Melbourne so I was from Melbourne and yeah I, I felt like I needed to be around other people because I was kind of a lost little freelancer but what you're saying here is that this is actually really suitable for businesses that want to retain their staff tell me more about that like how does that help yeah, sure. to retain staff so th look, there are still some co-working spaces that really focus on the freelancer or the startup. A lot of those tend to be either really small or uh, government backed or subsidized. What we've found is that there's a lot of co-working spaces that really focus on small business and creatives. They've been really successful. And then there's operators like us, which are more at the, we're at the premium end. Our two biggest customers are scaling businesses. So mm -hmm. a company that's going from 20 people to 40 people to 100 people to 200 people. I mean, like a Canva's a member of ours at the moment. And mm -hmm. they, they, they just need to attract and retain the best staff. 
<laughs> um, mm -hmm. So they can outsource a certain amount of their staff to us. They've, in, in Canvas case, like they've got a head office, but then their Melbourne team, it provides them an opportunity to come into a, in, in, into a workspace when they're not working at home. Then there's also corporates. So corporates have learned through the pandemic that having all of your workplace requirements all sitting on traditional leases with lots of capital tied up. Like, you know, we don't even know where we're going to be in six months, let alone five years. So what we're seeing is a greater proportion of workspace being put with flexible workspace providers like, like Hub because they, they need the terms. Mm -hmm. But the real thing they need is everybody's learned that they don't need to go to work to do work. Mm. So now what we're going to do is provide an experience every day for somebody to decide like you know I'm, I'm in my office at the moment or my sorry I'm in my um my study at the moment there's a cat over there and you know it's comfortable I need a reason to go to the city mm. okay. so hub and more like we think of ourselves as a hospitality company mm. so you know we've got a laser sharp focus on how do we create an experience that keeps people wanting to come back every day to the office right it's not just about the office where you go in and you work. It's all the other stuff. So what are the other examples of stuff that you, because I've been there and I did a tour and it is amazing, but I'll let you share with the audience. People want to be a part of something bigger. Like a big reason why people work for a company is that they're part of a community and they're part of a, a, you know, people that they consider their tribe. So, you know, they need learning opportunities. You need wellness opportunities. You need social opportunities. So all of that programming side of things, this is what this is what Hub focuses on. But then the I guess the main bit that we're 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 known for is that hospitality and amenities type of thing. So mm -hmm. when you come in, it's you know right from the word go, it's not a receptionist that is on the phone. You know, it's at the welcome desk where you get welcomed by somebody that's there greeting you with a smile, there's a cafe, you know, there's, there's a parents' room, there's a fitness space, there's a relaxation space. All of these spaces are there so that you can come in and work how you want, away from the distractions of home, but with all the professional tech and meeting facilities and all that kind of thing that, you know, is, is worth you getting out of bed for, cutting out the commute for. Yeah, yeah. And so just example with Canva, they have their own office, but then they them being able to have different uh, branches, let's just say they, they recruit people in Melbourne or Sydney, they can then rent some of your facility and place their staff in there. And That's with all that amenity, this is where the staff would feel really kind of engaged and not isolated from the big headquarter. And then we've got a corporate in Sydney where they have 180 people that access a space which only has about 30 or 40 desks. So the space has been customised for them. There's meeting rooms everywhere and there's about 40 workstations. Because mm. what they they know that not everybody's coming into the workplace every day. But rather than having like a big 180 person office where when those people come in, they feel like, you know, it feels empty. What they've done is they've engaged with Hub where now all of their people can come in. And whenever they do come in, they're surrounded by lots of other people working on lots of different projects. So it's, it's activated. And then also their terms, you know, they're, they're only locked in for two years, three years, so they can flex up and they can flex down, which, as we know, is just so important these days where you don't know where, where business is heading. Yeah, it is a crazy world out there. And, you know, a lot of my friends who, who have rented this uh, kind of co-working space, they always talk about network opportunity when you're working in here. So, yeah, tell us more about some of the benefits for, you know, smaller businesses who um, yeah. Yeah, just... For, for the smaller businesses from Hub, so, you know, that have two to ten staff, ten staff, 50% of them do business with other businesses in the Hub. And, and you know, indeed, we've had uh, businesses start up where they, you know, they they actually get all almost all their business from other members in the hub. So that's a great way of building a business network for, for a small business. What we've also found is as the companies have grown and there are more people working at hub from scaling and enterprise businesses than there are from small businesses. So what we've found is that those, the, it's all about the staff. Like even if you're a small business and you're mm -hmm. an entrepreneur, the only way you're going to succeed as an entrepreneur is attract and retain the best talent. Mm -hmm. So even when you've employed your first person, providing that person with social opportunities, learning opportunities, that if they had gone and worked in a big enterprise, they would have had all of those opportunities. 
but now you can be a small business, have that autonomy that you like, that person can feel a part of that business, but then be all, also a part of something bigger mm. because they get to connect with like the thousands of people that work from the hub each day. Yeah, yeah, I love that. And so what are the, some of the options for small businesses? Because I know I remember there are probably things where you can rent the, the meeting room or day passes. Yeah, what are some yeah, of the options? Sure. Yeah, yeah, sure. So, so the, um, I guess starting there, there's all of the, uh, the meetings, the programs of the learning and uh, professional and wellness and social activities that you can participate in. Then you can book meeting rooms. There's a cafe where you could, for instance, have a, a team lunch or get it catered. Then there's also member services. Like we work with you guys, Outsourcing Angel, mm-hmm. where you know uh, our members are able to access a whole suite of other services through our partners. It goes well beyond just your workplace. You know, you really mm-hmm. are able to put your business in there and then have an ecosystem around you of places of, of people and of products that you can connect to as you require. And, you know, b- businesses love that because, you know, you, you've got to be focused laser sharp on delivering for your customers and your business and all of the other things, that's where you can actually leave it to partners like Hub. Yeah, I love the model completely. So now with the whole pandemic thing, it can't, there, was, there has been some pros and cons. Um, the, the, the pros is that, yeah, more people are you know embracing the flexible workspace. But, yeah, how, how has business been for, for Hub in terms of yeah. uh, what's really yeah. happening? It's been awful. Uh, you know, yeah. Like, yeah, no, like essentially our customers haven't been allowed to come in and use the service that we provide because of, a, of government restrictions. So, you know, it's it's been a real challenge operating workspaces. And just like, uh, you know, something where I know that we'd be like a lot of other businesses though, is it's keeping our teams uh, safe and motivated. And you know, we've got 90 full-time at, at, at Hub. And so navigating through that with our team and keeping them motivated yep. and also um, making sure it's a healthy and safe workspace for them, that, that's obviously been a huge focus for us. We're also lucky that as we come out of this, flex workspace and co-working is live, widely expected to boom. Like pre-pandemic, you know, I could talk to people about co-working and flex and there'd always be that, but oh, I could just get my own office and do all of these other things. I don't have to deal with that block now. Like yeah. it's like people come to us because they get it. It, yeah. it kind of made the case for flex, but it's also played very well into hubs positioning in the market. Um, so you know at, at the premium end with a focus on hospitality and experience because people know now that they've got to give people as I said before a reason to come back to the office. Yeah. So just having a desk and a chair that's not going to keep a flexible workspace operator in business. You know, you've really got to know how to give an experience that's so good that people are going to actually choose to pay to come into to that workplace. So we've really seen a fight to quality mm. um, and an understanding that hospitality plays a role in providing a workspace that people will love. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I can resonate so much with you in a sense where the pandemic has also affected our business in a good way. At first, it was kind of negative, but then now it's like, we don't have to explain it. You can work from home, that you can use tools to work from home. But the other thing that you just reminded me is just how important it is to treat the people you, you work with well. You know, and it, we do that on the online way. You know, we have VAs that we make sure that we take care of them because without doing that, they're not going to stay with our clients or work with them. And it just reminded me about you guys being a B Corp, you know, when you were looking for a provider you were like want to make sure that you align with values you know where did that come from and why is it so important to you to be that qualified that's always been there like look whether it was me like whether it was my folks when they had their small business before me like I've always had that like I want to be in business for more than just a profit so it's always been a part of hubs founding and values but one of our values is beyond profit but B Corp we've been a proud B Corp for eight years now actually during the pandemic we became certified carbon neutral so when you get your office at Hub, we you you know that uh, your office in Hub is is carbon neutral. We offset any of the emissions and measure it and, and and get audited to that effect. And then finally, in that little uh, badge that I've got on the on my background yep. here. So for three years now, we've been on the list of best employers for under a hundred staff in Australia through the Great mm. Places to Work program. And you know this is. I'd actually call this a bit of a turning point and like it wasn't rocket science and uh, I I wish it was an aha moment from ages ago but you know we really realized that if we doubled down on our team and created a great place to work for them 
mm. then in turn they'll end up creating a great place to work for all of our customers. So, you know, not rocket science, but like it works. Yeah. And so, you know, we've, we've been able to keep so many of our team and keep them motivated because we really focus on that culture piece. And then it's really great when we get our NPS scores and our customer experience scores where they're, they're, just, they're just amazing because you can really see that our, our team then really invests in trying to provide the, the service for our customers. Yeah, that's amazing. I mean, were you? how were you raised up? You know, how, Where did you learn that from? Where, where did you get that drive to kind of, you know, because sometimes most people who get into business thinking, you know, it's all about the money and I need to be rich and successful, you know. What got you to learn it in a different uh, way? Look, yeah, look, I, I probably will put that on. Um, that's mum and dad's fault. Oh. Uh, <laughs> a good yeah, fault. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. So they, um, uh, no, I can, th- I can thank mum and dad for that. They, they ran a, they were always in hotels. So mm. essentially, we, the family's always been in hospitality. They, you know, they were selling beds and I was selling desks, but really both of us were selling an, an experience. Mm. And, you know, to deliver a really good experience, you, you, your team has got to really want to be working and like who they're working with and that alignment. So you like B Corp, you know, I, I can, I can talk all day about the, it's good to have the social and the environmental impact, but what it really helps with is attracting and retaining our team. Like mm-hmm. our team, you know, they, they also want to be a part of something bigger mm-hmm. and they want to have an impact through the, the, the hard work that they do. So, and we're seeing this more and more, like most of our team are in their 20s. So we're seeing there that people in their 20s and the new generation of the workforce, they don't just want to wage each month. You know, they want to be connected with a whole range of different things. And mm-hmm. so when you look at Hub, we're also starting to see that customers see our B Corp, our certified carbon neutral, you know, our commitment to our team and they want their brand and their people to also be a part of that. So, you know, whilst we initially did these things for impact reasons, we're also starting to see that there's a real commercial plus to it as well. And, you know, if you can get a commercial plus whilst at the same time being good to the environment and the community, that's a pretty good combo if you ask me. Yeah, definitely. It's such a win-win and you you get to work with good people. You're good yourself and then you attract the good people and then good people want to associate with good people. Um, So I guess the last question is, yeah, what's what's up for Hub? What's what's coming in the next year? I know you've been opening up a lot of branches, et cetera, but yeah, anything new you want to update? Yeah, and look, it's certainly been nerve-wracking opening up branches when like when when there's no one in them. Um, Yeah. But look, you know, our our three-year plan is to create um, Australia's best platform for businesses and their teams to love where they work. so what that involves is you know, we do see us probably doubling from the you know the 15, 16 locations that we've got open and, and under development at the moment up to more like 30 locations. Mm-hmm. We'll have a big presence in Melbourne and Sydney suburban areas. And then we'll, we'll also see down the track, I think, some non-capital uh, cities as well. Uh, you know, the what's often be, often called hybrid working. Um, you know, at the moment, hybrid working largely consists of all just working from home. And that's obvious that that'll include working from home and working from headquarters. But then we also see that one of the really big uh, places for work in the future will be working near home. From, oh. yeah, from, from a work hub that's located to where you live. So, you know, what, like, not everybody has. I love that idea. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, not everybody has a study. Some people have kids. You know, sometimes it's not actually really that good working at home at all. But also we know that we don't have to bear the commute and expense of going into the CBD. And that's where we see suburban work hubs will also be able to fill a, a, a need there, a demand. So between, we'll, we'll continue to have our, our CBD and fringe offerings like we already do, but then we'll complement them with um, suburban work hubs and key activity centres. That is such a smart idea. And I think I'm the perfect customer for that because I think I really love that kind of environment and offices. But yeah, I, I do dread the kind of long travels to go all, all the way to the city. <laughs> definitely got some desks for coming soon. <laughs> Sounds good. I guess I have one last question, actually, because you've been a veteran entrepreneur for so long. So what, I guess, what's the one thing you've learned over the years, you could sum it all up and you could go give an advice to, you know, to the aspiring entrepreneurs out there about business in general? Yeah, so look, I'll, look I'll, I'll give two. The first one is just the one that, you know, often people give of the, you know, don't give up. You've really just got to keep on going. 
going and going. And then when you can't go on any longer, you got to just keep on going. The second one that I found useful is like whatever your industry, whatever your craft, whatever it is, like be a master of it. Like really get to know the industry and the business that you're in. Like I've always found like I couldn't name anybody else that's been to as many conferences and as many overseas co-working things as I have. And it's just because I really am invested in making sure that I, I understand the business that I'm in. And then I've also got a really big community of people that I can reach out for, mm-hmm. out to. So like all through the last 18 months of this pandemic, which has been hands down the hardest thing I've ever done, it's not like I had to come up with all of the answers myself. Like it, it, so I've developed that knowledge and community of people that can, you know, can really mean that we we get a deep understanding of what's going on. Yeah, I love those two advice and I definitely agree with them (laughs) because business never gets easier. And also I learned recently that, you know, to be successful in anything, you need to pretty much be obsessed with something and and love it so much that you can, That's and that's how you can actually uh, not give up, right, when you love something so much and master it. It certainly sounds like you've got the enthusiasm (laughs) on your side as well. Well, thank you so much, Brad, for today's session. I really learned a lot. And, yeah, thanks again for your time. Thank you for the opportunity. I really hope um, our, each of our businesses get to work together into the future. And- Will do. <laughs> well, thank you so much for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments below if you have tried uh, working in a co-working space. What are your thoughts? Now, if you enjoy learning about business, I have more videos for you here.